My guest today is Jamie Kilstein. He is a comedian and the host of the podcast Fuck Up's Guide to the Universe. Hi, buddy. Hello, Jamie. Uh, nice you, to see you again. Last time I saw you, we were getting we, breakfast tacos. That's like become our that's become our new thing. It's me and you getting breakfast tacos, and me trying to teach your dog how to get us pussy. <laughs> Was that a terrible way to start the show? That's it's fine. I'm a comedian, everyone. I, Shut I think up. It's, uh, <laughs> I might, I might potentially cut that out, out I'm gonna, of the. Uh, I'm going to keep bringing it up, so you're going to have to edit it out like ten times. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, uh, on on yep. that note, then having kicked off, I think literally the first <laughs> line with a reference to trying to get my dog to be a woman <laughs> uh-huh. magnet. Uh, uh, you you yourself are a comedian who has got into I some have. trouble for I lady have. issues. Uh, is yeah, this correct? I. Th- th- it's funny. I'm actually glad you introduced me first as a comedian who has a podcast because back in the day, uh, that's how I would be introduced. It was, you've seen this next guy on Conan, uh-huh. funny man, Jamie Kilstein. And now I feel like whenever I go on a podcast, even when I did like Burt Kreischer's, even when I do comedy podcasts, the intros are much more like, whew, our next guest has been through quite a lot. Like it's always like very <laughs> sad. And like, I, I don't know. I don't know how he hasn't killed himself, but right. please keep it going yeah. for the, the very unstable Jamie Kilstein. And then I'm like, hi everybody. I went through it. <laughs> I'm not dead. I I, I have a, a a modified, better but modified version of that. Where when I do stand up, a lot of the time, like right now, you can see I'm wearing this nice yep. window pane blazer. I'm wearing uh, a tank a top like time, someone who has been me tooed. Um, yep. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you look like you're eating ravioli out of a can <laughs> with a screwdriver. Uh, I look like I'm I'm selling Mormon's yep. car insurance. Yeah. Uh, we've got very different. We're a very right depressing now. buddy like, cop movie. <laughs> I will. I'll do stand up and they'll introduce me. When they don't know me, they'll go, This next comedian, uh, very mm-hmm. well dressed. And I'm like, Just, just say, say I'm funny. funny. What's wrong with you? Just say this next very guy's funny. very funny. You don't have to know anything about me. You know me. what it just is, though? It's that. comics projecting. It's like when guys don't know how to introduce a female comic. And they're like, uh, mm. She's a hot. This and, next one's a lady. Uh, We've I got don't a know lady. What to do. My boner up. is, yeah, and there's just fucking panic. Um, it's just projecting. It's comics don't know how to dress well. So they're like, I got to address this elephant in the room. And it's like, it's not yeah. an elephant in the room. It's a dude dressing like a man. Yeah. Just let him do it and then go yep. buy go buy a tie. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, okay. So then, then uh, having skipped the obligatory, whew, oh boy. Uh, this guy. Been through a lot. You I have been through a lot, though. Now I, I I've met you. I've met you on the other side of the on the mm-hmm. other side of the hill. I feel like I have met you and and started uh, eating breakfast tacos and training yep. my dog with you to uh, mm-hmm. to attract women. Uh, in in Jamie yes. phase two, uh, Jamie, Jamie phase. Well, actually, I think there's kind of three phases. phases based on what I'm seeing here. I I feel like Jamie phase one was um, hyper hyper. Part- yeah, I, yes. I, like, I defer to you on this because I didn't know this one, but kind of hyper partisan woke, mm-hmm. uh, like leading the online mob, Jamie. Phase two is yep. cancel, Jamie. Phase three is, is breakfast, breakfast tacos, tacos, Jamie, just that I'm now dude, friends with. Is that, a, is that about right? Just Did a I dude get who the wants to get right? breakfast tacos. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> and train and dogs, and dogs to get women. women. I've learned nothing. Um, yeah. I mean... You know, it's interesting just to jump ahead so no one thinks they're listening to a podcast with a um, like accused uh, rapist. Uh, I had uh, I had an uh-huh. affair. Uh, I had consensual one night stands and I did stuff that I, that stuff, you know, a lot of it I did uh, sloppily and while depressed and uh, you know, could have handled it better, and and since then I have not, and since then I've been in good relationships, haven't cheated, whatever. The reason that cheating, which a lot of people have done, a lot of people have done because they're assholes and egomaniacs. A lot of people have done because they're in failing relationships. A lot of people have done. I mean, man, I I actually read this book recently that helped me a lot by Esther Perel, who's this like sex therapist called. It's like a dumb wordplay. It's like the state of affairs, I think, and. You know, hearing 40-year-old married women with children who are professionals say the same dumb shit I said. Like, literally say things like, I thought I was saving my marriage. Stuff that is so stupid looking back. But also you go, no, I really, I believed that. You know what I mean? As crazy as it, it sounds. And, you know, that's what happened. And then the sort of phase 2.5 was well so it happened and 
everything I was quote unquote accused, even the word accused sounds too much. Everything the, that I was accused of is stuff comedians have talked about on stage, but it was because I was phase one, Jamie, which was woke, self-righteous, mm -hmm. would jump on Twitter mobs just to get retweets, shit like that. That's what made it a story. That's what made it a funny story. If I was just a comic, it's not it's not a story. You know, the first show I did back, I remember the. I, I, I think if you were just a comic and you had an affair and cheated on your wife, the general regard would have been he managed to get married. Right. That's very impressive. Like, wow, he, he was married him. for a while. That lasted job, longer that than we thought yeah. it would. Can't wait to see the new. Yeah, six years is pretty good. That's like 45 years. In totally. Regular and then I'd have terms. a Netflix special called Divorced and I'd make a lot of money. It would be great. Mm -hmm. And yeah, exactly. uh, but it wasn't that. And. You know, so I uh, tried to kill myself, did all that. When I was canceled, I was actually in a relationship in Los Angeles. My my wife and I were already separated. Um, so that really saved me. The fact that I had a girlfriend, I had a place to live. You know, I mean, I, I tried to kill myself assuming she was going to leave me because I literally lost all my friends' money fans fans like i remember somebody i don't know if i told you this story over breakfast tacos one of my favorite stories is that um the when they just get their fucking marching orders they go so i had a dude on my facebook wall right i just want you to know because of everything you've talked about with mental health you saved my life something like that then i got canceled then wow. the next day motherfucker doesn't even delete that comment you know how you can add comment Added to the same uh -huh. comment. You're a fucking piece of shit. I hope you die. You know, whatever. <laughs> and so they got their order, so I lost everybody. And so I was like, well, certainly my girlfriend's going to leave me. And she didn't. And so that really helped me. But so disappear, just kind of start teaching jujitsu, go off the grid. Then I come back, do Rogan's, do some shows. Never really until, honestly, last month threw myself back into stand-up which is what I should have done. There was such shame that I would like tiptoe back in, pull away, tiptoe back in, pull away, repeat, repeat, repeat. And then there was a phase, and I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about this because of your sort of, I don't want to say tribelessness, but you know, you, you're you're not as easy as to- I, I would say I'm, I'm anti-partisan and kind of Perfect. label resistance and and everybody everybody has everybody suffers from groupishness i do too i'm sure that eventually there will be some sort of anti-tribe co coalition that happens where it becomes a tribe in yeah. and of itself but generally speaking i try to be anti-partisan and i i, don't I love really the idea like of can you uh introduce me as adverse to labels and anti-tribe got it uh this next speaker ah he dresses really well um <laughs> so there was a phase where I started going on these right wing shows and I've talked about this. I, I, I think I talked about this on Tim Pool show yesterday. Well, I actually, ho hold on. I'm, I'm going to pause you, Jamie, because I, I want to I want to make sure that we've got kind of like the the. the oh, the before we go to moment. politics. And then, and, sure, sure, sure. We go from there because because I'm, I'm like I, what, what I'm really curious in on, on my end. And I, I would assume that listeners are as well. But like since I'm also in public media, this is one of my fears is that I will do something stupid or actually bigger that I will do something that's misinterpreted sure. and that I'll get in trouble and and that you know I will everything will come yeah. clattering down this is something that I think a lot of people in, in public media are very much afraid of see you should have um, done what so, I did which is get uh, it over with what before it was I mean I was technically pre Louis CK not to brag everybody but Louis kind of well, copied well, that was the next question guy. I had <laughs> well yeah because you because you, you're like this takes place was was the meat Too hashtag no. uh uh around at this time this is pre this is it was just sort of, of like, hashtag you, fuck you, Jamie you, 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 when the wave pool makes the boom noise before the big wave happens, you're at, you're at that boom thing. I would get the called. Wave yeah, I mean, I really only have a couple unhinged stalkers that still care about this. The majority of people in my life are women. The majority of you know famous comics I'm friends with or pro wrestler. Every jujitsu, everything I'm involved in. I'm friends with the women because they see how I treat women. You know, I remember the first comedy show I did back after COVID open for Corinne Fisher, who hosts a podcast called Guys We Fucked, mainly a female audience, female club uh, owner. And uh, Lucy, the club owner, she goes to me, she goes, uh, I just want you to know you treat my female staff better than guys who have not been canceled. And I go, I know like I but it took me. I mean, this happened eight years ago, dude. And it took me till now, really this month, to yeah. finally 
accept those compliments, accept when girls in my life tell me like that I'm one of the people they trust them because there was such shame. The amount of first dates I have gone on where they're like, what do you do? And I was like, well, it starts with Jezebel. Like I would just tell the whole story because I had yeah. such shame and I go, well, if we hook up, they're going to find out. And then if they find out, like, I mean, that's, that's still probably all. It, I have to say, it really inconvenienced me because my way to get women was I would claim to be Jamie Kilstein for a that, long time. That, that, and, that was and a big do thing. That and, and for credit and now purposes. You, and then when you got canceled, now all of a sudden the woman train stops and my credit line You was, have to find another jujitsu. Because you're, all of your I income had stopped. You it have to really, find another jujitsu guy to pretend you are. Just say you're Joe Rogan. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, I'm frequently mistaken. And they'll be like, oh, so you're anti vax? Uh, you'd be like, comedian. damn it, I got to stop using comedians as. So what? Well, yeah, okay, what was your so, question? So, okay, I'm, so I'm you, sorry. I, I think I started to go off into. Well, so, so no, no, no. I'm just reliving so let, trauma, let's, Andrew. Let's, sorry if I'm not with it and right. fucking soundbite friendly. <laughs> I'm just going through the thing that ruined my life. <laughs> I just right. I just want the sound bites and the jokes, uh, and then I've got my funny little rejoinders, and then we'll, we'll wrap up and get breakfast yeah. tacos. This is just um, to make you well, look so, okay, good. So, You're like, who's my most disheveled friend? Who's been fucking just. <laughs> through the ringer and everyone's gonna be like you know andrew is yeah so you're afraid oh that's right i made a dumb joke about i got it okay so you're afraid of that i mean look I well i actually so, so let, let me let me pause okay so so um you you, you said you you have an affair like the 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 basics of this are yep. you have an affair um there, there are women that accuse you of of predatory behavior this is you know what fucking no no, no. i'm article. actually going to start defending myself instead of being like this is what they said here's what Go happened i have this affair I'm depressed. I'm in a marriage that is, you know, uh, 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 not the gold standard for for marriage. I do a stupid thing. Uh, this girl starts hitting me up. Uh, literally, it's the most cliche, like sleeping with the secretary. It's, you know, oh, I should go on the road with you. And I'm like, OK, I'm booking her separate hotel rooms because I'm so depressed that I don't think I am a sexual object in anyone's fucking eyes. So I'm booking her separate hotel rooms, all this stuff. Uh, I'll just tell this story. I'm going to start telling this story. I didn't because I tried to take the fucking high road for so long is in the Jezebel article. My big Harvey Weinstein predator line was she goes, um, it, it said that people said uh, that I were on the train to Washington, D.C. And I said, people are going to think we're flirting. That was my inappropriate line. I'm a, You're monster. a monster. People are going to think we're flirting. That I believe that is almost a line from it, <laughs> Oklahoma. Like that's a very, Well, we did like, bust into song I gotta say after it, that. In, in terms of, of uh, uh, inappropriate hand on thigh, people will think we're flirting is is a reasonably innocuous. Well, line here's what makes it uh, even funnier, Andrew, is I used to have a joke about how I didn't understand cum shots. And it was like, uh, are we doing this for women? Are women enjoying this or do they just think we like it? Blah, blah, blah. She puts her hand on my leg and goes, just so you know, I like when guys come on my face. And I go, and then I'm dumb dumb me goes all Oklahoma and is like, oh, someone's going to think we're flirting. And I just panicked, right? Then I leave the show. There are famous political pundits who are at the show that can vouch for this. Rania Kolick was at the show. Um, uh, there were a bunch of, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the other, another like famous female journalist. I leave. Because me and this girl I had the affair with usually sell merch together. She takes the money. I sign the stuff. And I leave because I'm like, oh, I'm going to have an affair. I'm going to have an affair. I'm gonna, like, I'm just so what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? I keep getting text messages. I go, hey, I'm going to I'm trying to watch the fight. I, I just want to watch the fight, you know. And then finally she's like, come on. You said we were going to hang out. Then it's all just downhill. I screw up from there again as cliche as possible. You look stressed. Let me rub your back. And then the next morning I'm like, I love you more than I've loved anything in my life. And we have a two year affair. It has nothing to do with there's no power dynamics. I have a vegan podcast. You know, we have an affair after she stops helping me on the road. We just have an unhealthy affair where I'm th trying to figure out how to get out of this relationship. But I also am still, you know, in, in love with my ex-wife. We have this show together. We have a we have a best friendship is what we have. And uh, I do this stupid thing and I hate myself for it and I hate myself for it every day. And at one point she goes, this is another thing I'm going to start saying publicly. At one point she goes, I tried to break it off with her. I think in the article it made it sound like she kept trying to break it off. I kept trying to break it off because I am tortured and I go, uh, 
I tried to break it off and she goes, I'm going to write a book about this. And I go, I'm not famous enough for you to write a book, but I was famous enough for a Facebook post that turned into a Jezebel article. I was just, I was just famous enough to get canceled, not famous enough to have like a savings account or a pool. And, and, and so, um, she put out this Facebook post that was like who on some feminist podcast of girls I was friends with who has been wronged by supposed feminist uh, Jamie Kilstein. And out of the hundreds of girls, bam, brag. That's all I want to say on the show. Good night. Go listen to my podcast. Follow me on Instagram. Out of the hundreds of girls I've slept with, one person said he flirted with me on direct message. I told him I had a boyfriend. He said, sorry, which is what I did. I was like, oh, shit. Sorry. I thought we were going to hook up. Um, I've never sent a dick pic, no unsolicited, nothing about sex. It wasn't anything like that. It was, I thought we were flirting. I was going to be in that town one day. I was like, we should hang out. She goes, I have a boyfriend. I go, oh, my bad. And then the other one was a girl I hooked up with, didn't have sex with. Also, these two, me and my ex-wife were in an open relationship at this time, um, trying to like set. Well, okay. That, that was, that was my, my next question is if. The 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 affair that that happened. No, are you in an open relationship. The, no, no, no. That, well, that okay, okay. So it is it is that an affair. I screwed there is up, and then on. to the, save the relationship, we sort of tried a, an open relationship. Okay, and and we're public okay, about right. it. Talked about it on the podcast. Um, whatever, and and I hated it. By the way, I hated it because I'm through everything. I'm still a stupid romantic that wants to find my dumb soulmate, and I hate it. Um, so. Yeah, it makes it sound like I sleep with this girl. It makes it sound like I'm still cheating, which I'm not. And in the article, it said something like, she said something like it was the safest I ever felt with a man or it was the most I ever, something implying that when I am with a woman, I make them feel safe. This is actually a compliment I get a lot. I got this from my last ex-girlfriend, which is I've never felt this safe in bed. I've never felt pressured. All the things you're supposed to do And then in parentheses, in this fucking article, it says Jezebel could not find the quote, but still printed that. And it's like, right, you can't find a quote where I'm talking about smashing road poon with my feminist wife. The the quote I was about to say, right, I was about to say the the quote, because I I read this in preparation for talking to you, is that that according to her, she said that she felt very, very safe the following week. You referred to her as a a road road conquest or something like that. Road fuck, that's it. And then Jezebel's like, we couldn't find this quote. And I was like, well, that that seems like a thing that would be relevant. Can you to, just write a have. whole article that's just made up stuff and then go, we couldn't find this? Like you, because I'll tell you, when you put emotional abuse in the title and that's what you're talking about, you're talking about it for a thing that doesn't exist. Also, that does not make me an abuser. That makes me an asshole. Also, it didn't happen. That's the thing, right? Like, and this is the problem. And this is the, the reason why the women in my life who know about this, or I have a lawyer right now who's trying to help me with these stalkers and stuff for free because she has been in abusive relationships. She has dealt with actual sexual predators. And when you throw these words out and you equate a bad marriage with sexual misconduct, or you say predatory behavior is consensual one night stands, you are not only who cares about me, not only hurting the guy, but you are damaging the entire Me Too movement, I mean, after that Aziz Ansari story came out, people started taking the whole movement less seriously. And there are actual predators out there. And women have to deal with stuff that me and you will never have to fucking deal with. And I still have so much empathy for all of that. But when you are using actual terminology that has hurt women... That has legitimately hurt women, and you're doing it because you're bored on the internet. You are a garbage person. I I feel like we live in a period of time where it's almost like we have like Orwellian five minutes yeah. hate, or we just have like a daily virgin to throw That's in it. a volcano. Like everybody, everybody's kind of frustrated. Everybody's kind of mad, and we go, "Oh, good! Like this is fun. I'm going to throw rocks yep. at this person, and I'm going to do it while I'm on a toilet, and I'm not going to think about it, and I'm not going to think about the consequences of what happened." Um, one of the things that bothers me about cancel culture is uh, like like me me being a judge's yeah. kid. Uh, I am I am actually hold on I'm going to back up. It's funny you're you're getting hit up by ladies that, mm-hmm. that listen to your show and and want to come with you. 
I, I have no such opportunity to fuck up. I, my, the, the invitations I get are literally guys who listen to my show will invite me yep. to play Dungeons and Dragons with them online, which I'm very flattered by. But I'm not. By the way, get I knew you. Right? I knew like, you were the judge from Night Chords, kid. I was like, this guy looks so familiar. That's. <laughs> I knew it. I could totally Amazing. be that guy's kid. And by the way, um, don't get me wrong. Like, After so, a, there are some shows I'll get hit on, but there are a lot of shows where girls are like cheering the whole time when I'm talking about sex, and the only people that talk to me afterwards are their boyfriends wanting to talk about pro wrestling. They're like, "Bro, CM Punk's back," and I'm okay. like, "I know." That does yeah, make no, no, me no, feel a little bit too. better. But 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 me me having this like like D and D lawful good <laughs> mentality, um, like like one one of the things that like in in the court system you've got certain like you're right and you're you're innocent until yeah. proven guilty. Um, there's there's due process. There's also proportional sentencing, and right. I feel like that doesn't happen right. with cancel culture. Where what, what, one of the things that I've been kind of disturbed by the last couple of months is like I, I'm in Austin. I just did an episode on Roe v. Wade in, in the episode uh, prior to you coming on, Jamie. And I'm looking. I'm at glad the that you you, you uh, either on, on got a lot you you weeded the women out who would already hate me. I assume <laughs> for this next episode, so this is perfect. <laughs> You know, actually, so it as you and I are talking, it dropped today. I do not yet know what the fallout of that episode will be. It might be that you and I are about to move into right, my right. We get canceled again. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll we'll just we'll just which like, is even funnier because you started this um, by being like Jamie's on the up and up, and by the time it airs, we're both just gonna be fucking destroyed. <laughs> Well, I'll say on, on my end, one of the things that I'm getting right now, and I've, I've not been canceled, but I have been so terrified uh, the last few years of, of stepping in a bear trap and getting in trouble. And I'm kind of getting to the point of like, ah, fuck it. I'm just going to say what I think. And you we'll have see where the to. Cards fly. Like, and... uh, like with, with Roe v. Wade, I, I've avoided that topic for three years because it just, first of all, I don't feel like I have anything unique to contribute to the right. conversation in terms of insight. Well, you were doing, when we, hung, think, when we hung out already, and you were prepping for this episode, I actually had a moment where I go, this is why Andrew makes more money on Patreon than I do, is you were doing so much research. And you said, I I, I, I will hook you up, because he said this off air, off record, where it was, you, you said that to me. You were like, I don't know what I have to add. So you just turned into this workhorse where you're like, I'm not going to just mm-hmm. say something. And we need more of this in our world. I'm not going to say something just to have a fucking hot take on it. And I think I, I would like to say I did the same thing. You know, my my take on my podcast was essentially I only would have screamed pro-choice, pro-abortion stuff on Twitter and now following conservatives. And some of them I genuinely think think they are saving baby. It made me stop and pause, not necessarily change my mind about how I feel about the law, but it made me stop and pause and at least show empathy and then start to think about, oh, you know what? I was advocating like late term abortions without, and maybe I still feel that way, but I definitely didn't really know what they were or learned about it. And so kind of a similar thing where it's like, well, what can I add? Well, I can add my ignorance to the topic and some empathy and and try to do it that way. And you were just, yeah, you just dove into research. Yeah, well, and that's, that's one of the things. So, like, like contrasting uh, breakfast tacos, Jamie. This is my new nickname with for you. Versus like, like mob yeah. leader, Jamie. When, when you're, when you're, oh, you think I'm part a leader? Of a, a Sorry, par- that's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> when tor- it torch is. wielding, Jamie, yeah. back in the day, when, when, when you're, when you're a partisan torch wielder, you, you build up social cachet by, by saying how right the yeah. your tribe is, how much you love your tribe, how how emphatically you're in favor of your tribe's ideals and by denigrating the other tribe. Since I don't do that and I don't have that option to me, I have to resort right. to research. Well, like that's like I, I don't I can't I can't rely on And I'm sure on you also points, and I can't feel the same on, way I do where you just go, man, I'd be a lot more popular if I just threw Molotov cocktails. And I think about this too. It's oh, yeah. the amount of money you compare to when I was that partisan person to being like, maybe I'll just talk more about mental health. And people are like, boo, it's, mm-hmm. it's tough. <laughs> and you know, look, I, I believed the stuff I was talking about to an extent. I believed the base level, right? Everyone is equal. Don't be a bigot. These are all things I still believe. War is bad. Mm-hmm. But then I got ad- addicted to that validation. When you said the sitting on your toilet, ruining someone's life, you know, and I did talk about this on Rogan a couple years ago, but it really was that even if it was an issue I truly cared about, even if it was, you know, a woman was assaulted or, you know, a black person was killed by the police. Yes, I genuinely cared about it. Yes, I genuinely felt 
the things I posted about, but also, yes, I would then sit there refreshing it when I started to get retweets because it would validate me because I was fucking depressed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And, and the, the big downside to that, I think is that like, um, if you are, if you are building your online presence and you're building your followership based around that mob mentality and that, kind of uh, visceral feel-good chemicals you get from throwing rocks at people, you ultimately live in a dangerous spot because the mob might Yeah, well, off. and that wasn't a thing that happened a lot back then. And I I used to joke. You know, my dad would always say, why, why don't you guys get the show on MSNBC or Sirius just to validate it? And one, I think we were making more money. But I used to joke, I go, because we can't get fired. It's everything... It's just coming from patrons. So literally the only way I could get fired is if I fuck up my marriage. And then I did it. That is exactly what I did. Okay. So then, okay. So then bring us to that moment then. Like, like walk me through the Not fear good. here. It wasn't um, good. They, they, but like, like, so like financially, Everything. socially, like I'm, I'm sure that you, you have like, you know, pe people quit following you on Twitter. I, or I, I should say, I know that people write lots of articles mm -hmm. when this happens, but like, what does the first month look like? Um, and, and the fallout. Of I mean, literally I was Googling how to kill myself that night and not because Wow. let me actually try to like, I will genuinely try to put myself back there and answer the question, but not because I was like, this will show I'm not because, but I was like, Oh, Oh, it's over. Like there's, there's literally nothing I can do. I don't have other skills. Everyone in my life thinks I'm this horrible person. No one's listening to me. No one's reaching out. You know, being in Texas and being back in comedy, this is the first time I have real friends. Back then, my only friends were the woke progressive journalists who the second either they were told to bail on me, they did. Or the second I couldn't get them on MSNBC talking head shows anymore, they just didn't care. So in my head, that's the way the world works. The way the world works is someone says something about you online and literally nobody checks on you. No one checks on you to make sure you're okay. Your friends are writing these tweets going, well, I had no idea. It's like, right, asshole. You had no idea because it's not fucking true. Um, people who did know about the affair, people who knew how tortured I was would get pressured to make a statement again, like I was an accused rapist. I am walking around Los Angeles like I am an accused rapist. I am walking around with a hoodie and sunglasses. I think everybody is going to know. I think that, I mean, it was awful. You know, my girlfriend gets back from seeing her parents. That's what pulls me out. I got really lucky that the jiu-jitsu place I was training and schooling a lot of the black belts before I was a black belt, um, their main black belt left. And so I just ran up to the head instructor and was like, hey, I'm pretty sure I can teach. So that's how I made a living for a year. Um, and then I tried to, you know, start this podcast. Because because everything else is dried up. Like you're, you're, the podcast oh, has everything. gone under at that point. And you, are, are you being disinvited from comedy clubs and things? Or is this everything. like running into uh, literally COVID or what? I will still get canceled for it. Period. I don't believe I will because of what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks, which is just going hard into comedy, going on shows like this, like Tim's, like, you know, all, all, things are blowing up right now for the first time because I've stopped caring. But the thing is. I had an agent who told me uh, if what happened to you was true, you make Aziz Ansari look like a gang rapist. But I have had, out of everybody, the most consequences. Again, for an affair, Chris D'Elia, who was accused of texting minors, fucking people, comics who were accused of rape. John Mulaney did a, a cooler version of what I did. I was like, he got to cheat and fuck Olivia Munn and do cocaine. I didn't get to do any of that. I just like sadly went to vegan restaurants with my affair. Um, the and he hosted SNL last week. You know, Louis C.K. just won a Grammy. All this stuff, mm -hmm. and that's not me being bitter and being like blah blah blah. But the reason was I had alienated so many people with this tribal shit that I didn't have the hardcore following that they do. Louis fans stuck by Louis. 
my fans were cowards. My, I mean, my fans just didn't ask questions. They were just told to bail and they bailed. Period. And well, that, that like that that reminds me of reading the the Jezebel article. What one of the things that stuck out to me? I'm going to read this. Oh, I haven't read phrase, this in a while. Again, this, this might this trigger. So, me. Uh, apologies if it happens, but this this is so like. I, I just I read this in the, the 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 inner judge part of me, like the the Obi Wan Kenobi character in a judicial role yeah. holding a gavel. Yeah, went what? I just figured so out why this, people want to play D and D with you. By the way, that was your <laughs> idea of a judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Obi Wan right, cool, Kenobi holding cool, cool, a gavel. Cool, cool. This yep, explains yep, yep. a lot. A We're lot figuring about it out. My opinions. Uh, so you 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 had had albums come out, and the the record label that you worked oh, this with is said wild. the following: We believe all of the women involved and were able to come to a swift and easy decision without having to hear Jamie's yeah. side of the story or yeah, anyone King. else's. And I was like, wait, so you just automatically sure. believed the accusants and didn't even talk to the person that was like, like literally we, we automatically yeah. believe them. There is no further due diligence cool, cool, cool. we need to do. And we don't need to hear about context mm-hmm. or anything else. And we are just going to use, there's the, the, the uh, the sentence to this is just yeah. everything's over. There's not a sliding scale. We're not going to try to make this mm-hmm. proportional to what happened, which sounds like you had an affair and were uh, like DMing with women and were perhaps pushy about that. Uh, nothing, can I stop you? Uh, not nothing. pushy about it. Okay. All right. Okay. Like that's that, that, what, that's what what's the, so crazy is even our hypotheticals that aren't that bad aren't even tr- like that. I, I think I said this on Rogan where it was like, even if everything in that article was true, which it wasn't, it's still nothing. It's still all consensual sex between consenting adults with nothing. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example for the pushy thing. The girl who said road fuck, um, that I called her a road fuck. She, before we hooked up, told me she doesn't want to have sex on the first date. And I said, if you are saying, and I was just in town for a night. I was leaving. I go, if you're saying that, even if you try, even if you change your mind, I'm going to stick to that, which is something I've done on numerous occasions. And what usually happens is we're naked and hooking up and they change their mind. And we did not have sex because I said, nope, like this is what you said. Wow. Which is, which is a level of fortitude, by the way, that most men would not that's have why, in that situation. I mean, that's why I, 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 I get, even when people say things like, ah, oh, pushy, but that's not a big deal. I go, no, fuck that. I've actually worked very hard to, not even work very hard. I pride myself on is what I should say. And in, in, in being like like in, in engaging yeah. in consent and, and making course. sure that that's there and making sure that both parties feel yes. good about it, that there's it's not well, especially after what happened. I don't even yeah. make a fucking yeah, yeah. first move. Um but the right. which I think I told you again over breakfast tacos. Um yeah, man. I mean it I mean, I don't even agree with what I mean that that's a crazy thing too. Is if you're against cancel culture, that means you have to be, you know, fucking pro. There's people are afraid and most people are in this great gray area. But on Twitter, it's you either have to be everyone deserves to get canceled. If you say if Chris Pratt tweets something wrong, he should never be in a movie again. Or the other side, which is like, oh, people are so PC. I can't say the N word at a basketball game and fucking grab a woman's pussy. And it's like, well, okay, (laughs) both of those sides are shitty. Right. Like. Maybe there's something of a yeah. spectrum. Maybe there's, maybe there's, you know, it's it's not a binary of everything's great right. or everything's and, horrible. And, you know, I'm, so Louis, for example, I heard that and I go, Ugh. I like, I wouldn't do that. But also when you were talking about proportionality, it's been however long and people still don't want him to make a living. And it's like, he has daughters. If I right. said this to a friend, right. I don't even know if I should say this publicly. God, maybe it was to you where I was like, if I was accused of rape, I could at least go, oh, here's evidence I didn't do the rape. And then they go, oh, okay, he was whatever the word is, whatever Obi-Wan would say, dishonorated? I don't know. He's innocent. <laughs> but when there are these exonerated. Exonerated, yeah. But when there are these crazy, zoom, zoom, that was my lightsaber. Uh, when the things are so, when an affair is called sexual misconduct, he's like, what, what do you do with that? What do you do with a breakup or not being in a relationship with someone being called emotional abuse. What do you do with, I mean, fuck man. I think the other corollary is like being called racist. So like, let's say theoretically you call me a murderer. I can go, 
all right, yes, I hit a drifter with my car mm-hmm, in the 70s, mm-hmm. but he didn't die. I didn't cover it up. I Classic, was very public yes. about this. There's there's no evidence that I've killed anybody or even hit a drifter right. since then. Uh, and I can be exonerated for that, right? But if you call me a racist, how do I fight that? Because ra- racist is a Well, subjective you shouldn't have run over a black and, drifter, and number like, one. That was your first problem. <laughs> And the fact, I got to say, the fact that I did it seven or eight <laughs> times that night does look kind of bad. Like in retrospect, While shouting about critical and, race and just, theory shouldn't be taught in schools. <laughs> look, that's on me. I mean, if, if anything, I was really ahead of the curve to, to be shouting critical race theory stuff in, in the 70s. I mean, it was it was very, I think that's why I got hired by very? the Ford administration. <laughs> um, but, but like, but I, I but like, um. If somebody calls you racist, your your ability to which by the way, you shouldn't be racist. It's yes. bad to be racist. I'm not like like if, if you if you are it's bad like to be a creep to and, women. And, and, and yes, exactly. But but like like ruining someone's livelihood, which is a, a big deal for a thing that cannot be right. disproven, is is a, a I, poor way I mean, to dude, run a We've all been in relationships and, where a woman will scream, fuck you, you'll be like you're being a bitch. You know, if if these and then just to be like, oh, is that going to be emotional abuse down the line? You know, for me, it's it's even crazier to sort of think about where because stuff's already been written about me that I, I say no to more girls than I say yes to nowadays, which I didn't used to do because I really and my female friends are saying, hey, give women credit to make their own decisions. And I go, no, I did that. Uh when women say they want something casual, if I sense they want something more than that, I say no. I go, there's no way I'm sleeping with you to then figure out that you're going to do this. And maybe I can go, oh, cancel culture stop me from getting laid. But also maybe that's making me a better person. You know, it's like I should say no to someone if I think they're going to get hurt. And again, a lot of my female friends are like, they can make the decision. They're grown ups. And yeah, maybe I would say yes to a lot more of them if this didn't happen to me. But when I actually look at it objectively, I go, okay, well, that's actually a pretty good decision. And and, and that to me, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with being, I don't like that there's fear behind it. I would like it strictly to come from compassion, which I've also done before. But you never know who's going to go, you know, because there's already shit about me. So if you... Go say something again, like, ooh, you know, I mean, my last girlfriend who I broke up with after the breakup, she goes, I almost want to write an article about how hard you tried. And I was like, don't, but also, aw. you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's crazy. Like the first girl I slept with after the relationship I was in, just like a casual thing in LA, she, like a lot of other women said, uh, you know, I just want to thank you for being so patient last night and, you know, not pressuring me or anything. And in my head, I was just thinking, cool, 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 cool. Can you go write an article on the Internet about that, please? <laughs> and so can you get a job at Reductus yeah. <laughs> or Jezebel and, and write yeah. this, please? That would really I help mean, me a so lot. So to go back to your the worry, it's here's what I think. And I probably went to said this a couple months ago. But. The thing that has really helped me now that my life is getting back on track is once I got past that shame and could start talking and for look, for all I know, people are going to hear me on this show and go, God, he's really callous about it. You guys don't understand the amount of I took 100 percent of the blame for so long because I was one, self-hating two trying to be a good person, three, not trying to stir shit up because I didn't want to fucking trend again. Oh. All of that. And now I can go, no, no, no. I should talk about the mistakes I made because my goal is to be a better person. But also I can say what's bullshit because it's not fair to live in shame your entire life when you have one, when the proportionality was out of control for what you were accused of. But also two, the fact that you're a better person. And the offers I got to be the anti-feminist guy and that route or just going the bitter again, me and you have hung out and we have talked about girls and you have never heard me be like these fucking lying sluts. Like I'm not going down that no. path. Even when I'll have a ton of people come up to me who see me on Rogan or see me on Tim pools. Like I got recognized at the gym this morning and the 99% of them are great. 
But occasionally someone will be like, yeah, these fucking bitches, right? And I'm like, nope, you're not my guy. That's not the side I want to yeah. be on. You, you, you know what? One of the, like, like, granted, I've not in any way gone through what you've gone through. But one of the things that I, I have figured out being a low level public yeah. figure is you can kind of make this four square of why people love right. you or hate you. There are people that there are people that love you because they know what you're doing mm-hmm. and they love you for it. They're great. Love them. They're wonderful, right? There are people that know what you're doing and hate you for it, and it doesn't feel good, but you're like, oh, well, you I mean, you nailed it. You know what yeah. I'm up to, and and you understand like where I'm coming from and what I'm promoting, yeah. and you're hating me for it. This like, nerd does okay, too much like, research. You know, yep. Right. Yeah, this guy does. He's he, usually for me, it's like I'm I'm like a limp wristed <laughs> cuck figure of some kind. I'm too yeah. centrist. I'm too I'm too tepid. Choose a I side, coward. Aside. That tends yep. to be the criticism. Yeah. Or or I, I'm yeah, I'm also like the other one is I'm also the people who hate me, I'm always center whatever they're not. They uh, they of always course. view me as sort of yes. an insidious like traitor character. Um, then there's the people, but like, but if they're like this fucking moderate, I'm like, yeah, okay, like fair enough, like because I I would say like temperamentally, yeah. I am a moderate. You've identified, I'm not a firebrand. Um, then there's people that hate you that don't understand what you're doing. Ugh. That you were you were getting in trouble for a thing that you right. don't represent or that you have not done, and then there are people that love you that don't understand right. what you're doing, and those are the folks right, who right, get right, you right, in right. trouble. Where like 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 I will do like I'll, I'll make a funny video where I'm making fun of socialism because I'm very much a free enterprise guy, and then someone will be like, "Yeah, fuck right. transgender people," and I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, where did you pick get a side low? transgender where people? No, 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 yeah, yeah." And it's like, so it's like that, like that, like, I, I don't mind getting in trouble for totally. things that I own, right. Of like, yes, I believe that thing. You can be mad at me for that thing, but it does bother me when I get in trouble for things that yep. I don't believe that I'm being unfairly castigated as. And it worries me when people love me for <laughs> things that I also don't believe. Cause those are the ones that get to drag totally. you. So, shit. you know, all I can say is the internet is fake. <laughs> it's not real. Yeah. And I've never met one person from the internet who has said something bad about me. And even the times, especially in jujitsu, but that could be because I could fuck most people up in jujitsu, is they'll be like, hey, I heard you on this thing, didn't agree with you, but Mm, you're a cool guy, or can I ask you a question, or what? That's like the worst it's gotten, which even that is like rare. And I realized this month that thanks to microdosing, but also just thanks to me finally being confident and going sort of headfirst back into comedy and making the podcast much more filthy and sort of free speechy. And, you know, I, I've just stopped thinking about what people on the internet are going to think about what I say. And I think the more authentic, I mean, shit, I'm getting hit up by more women and I'm talking about this stuff more. I think the more authentic you are, so I should I should go back to being go get canceled. To be Jamie oh right, should, like I, yes. should, I should yeah, present yeah. this. Yeah, the, okay, great. Oh, the okay, last great. month, Fantastic. Jamie Kilstein. I mean, there's still going to be some blowback, but you're good. Um, okay. And so now that I've stopped believing what the internet says, and this sounds silly, but I'm actually looking at my actions for the first time. I feel like maybe I would have told that club owner story defensively before, but I probably wouldn't have even told it. I don't think I told any stories like that on Rogan because I was like, well, I don't want to look defensive. I don't want to look like I'm saying women like me. I'm not a creep. And, but now these are real stories that I think about. And I think about some fucking, some fucking stalker whose wife tried to fuck me. Again, I've stopped caring what people think. Uh, You'll be hearing from my lawyer soon, bud. Said a bunch of untrue stuff about me in the jujitsu community. And... uh, I remember just assuming that what happened to me before is what would happen to me again. And I didn't show up at my gym for a couple weeks and I showed up and this is so ridiculous. It's going to sound like I'm making it up, but four of the women who were training in class saw me got up from class and ran over just to hug me and say, I'm so sorry what happened to you. This is bullshit. Do you need anything? You know, they post about me all the time on Instagram. And these are women who have been in the most vulnerable I mean, besides sex, the most vulnerable position ever. We are body to body. I am literally putting them in things that could, moves that could kill them. We've hung out one-on-one. You know, they see how I treat women. They see how I talk about my exes. They've seen me with my exes. And that was shit that I wouldn't have even looked at in the past because I go, well, the internet says this. 
So it's like, and now I feel like if I trended on Twitter again, I could be, I could so confidently be like, this is garbage. And here's why this is garbage. Whereas before I didn't know I had such little confidence and I know I shouldn't have had a fucking affair that I just let it bury me and I disappeared and then I went away and it buried me. And even when I went back on Rogan, dude, I was doing stupid shit. Like I go, I wasn't even back on social media yet i didn't have a podcast i had nothing to promote i had nothing to gain and in my head i go oh this will show what a good guy i am is that i'm not doing this for followers i'm doing this just to be authentic and it was fucking stupid (laughs) and i should have had something but i didn't and again because i just felt like i was this leper that was being dragged back into the public because someone because rogan felt bad for me and now i honestly feel like i could a thousand percent defend myself and the what I'm seeing is the more I talk about it, the more people are reaching out to me to be like, hey, man, like, I actually appreciate your vulnerability and I'm rooting for you. And I would have never thought that could happen. And so all you can do, everybody listening, is you can spend every day trying to be a good person. And then the next day you try to be a better person. And when you're tempted to do something that you go, oh, this could be... Okay, maybe you maybe you think about it or maybe you fuck up and then the next day you go, okay, how can I fix this to the best of my ability? Trust me, I've still slept with plenty of people that I'm like, "Ah, I probably shouldn't have done that. And so now I get to go when I first moved to Austin, I spent uh, COVID was the first year I was single. And I felt so good and I was just ready to fucking find my person when I moved to Austin because you hear all these stories where people go, I was single for a year and then I met my wife and I thought that was going to happen. And I end up right away in all of these. I'm making the same mistakes I made before. I'm moving too fast. I'm not noticing red flags. I don't have confidence. I'm insecure. And I was like, what the fuck, man? I meditate now. I thought I was enlightened. I thought I was, you know, I thought I could do this. And I was still making mistakes. And I remember I got so upset and I was telling my brother this. I go, dude, I still moved too fast. I was still attracted to these fucking women. And he goes, yeah, dude, but the old version of you would have moved in with them, which I did with my last, by the way. But, and it's true. Or even the one I moved in with that I just broke up with, it would have ended terribly. And it ended suddenly, but we talked afterwards and we told each other we still love each other and we support each other. And now we're completely out of each other's lives until I have to pick up my stuff, which I'm still kind of fucking putting off for a couple months. Um, And... Do you want me to do that? I feel like now that you live in Austin, that's something it, I could theoretically be. do. Like I would, I, I, I've got the personality of a very charming hostage yeah, yeah. negotiator. I, so I, I feel might, like I would be a good interlocutor. I might need that. Don't you. bring the dog though, because if okay, and I got okay. an SUV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, I'll kill you if you make a move on her. Uh, I will physically <laughs> kill you. Um, so yeah, you will okay. be my drifter. Um, so I mean, that's the answer, and it sounds so cheesy. And yeah, again, I know I would be popular if I were on podcasts. I was like, man, you got to protect yourself. You got to screenshot everything. You know what I mean? But it's sort of like for someone who has been, I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've also been fucked over a lot and I've been left out to die a lot. The fact that I am still naively, hey man, we can, we're all good people. And I think you can be a good person. Maybe that's stupid. Well, I I think you've, so, but th- I, I'll, I'll I I think you've actually become more of that. Now, granted, I didn't know you during your yeah. pitchfork days, but it it seems to me, based on our conversations that we've had, it's not that you went from being a feminist woke liberal to being an anti woke right. conservative. It's that you went from being a myopic mm-hmm. partisan liberal to being an open minded tolerant yeah. liberal. Yeah. Like you're, I don't think, I don't think your underlying political philosophy has really altered that much, but I do think your interaction with people you disagree with appears to have really matured 100%. and grown a lot to where you're, you're much more open to people. And like, like it's, it's like when I talk to you, you you'll frequently bring that up where you'll, you'll kind of stake out your position. And then you'll tell me about an interaction you had with somebody that had a, a diametrically opposed thing. And you'll kind of, like, I can kind of hear you thinking out loud going, I can tell this person's a really yeah. decent person. And I also can tell that they brought up some things that I don't agree with them yet, but they did make I mean, me dude, think about my position. And I, I think that's good. That seems like a great growth Even thing when I went on done. Tim Pool's show and Seamus and Lydia, who host the show with them, they're both very, very pro-life. And I'm listening or I'm on the show 
and it's going great. And there, you know, however many hundreds of thousands of people are listening are going to hear it. And I'm a pro-choice dude. And they said a pro-life thing that I never thought about. And in front of hundreds of thousands of people, not off the air, I go, oh, like I never thought about that. That's hor- Can you tell me more about that? Even in front of all those people being willing to hear the other side and willing to on air go, oh, I don't like that. Like, and I didn't, they were describing like, yeah, some like pulling out the baby and kill it, like some fucking horrible thing. And, and I thought it was really important for me to go, Hey, as someone who is like vehemently pro-choice and has been, I never heard those kind of stories on my side. And those stories are shitty and horrible and it's okay to think that there are stories. And and I think it makes you a a better, it, it, it strengthens your position as well, because I think people instinctively, when they know that you are advocating for a thing and you are not listening to me and you are uninterested in my position, then, then I don't, yeah, then I don't, I'm not really interested in engaging with you. Like, why would I, why would I engage in a good faith argument with you where I'm open to having my mind changed where you are not doing that? And you're basically taking advantage of my, my openness. Whereas when you approach that and you're vulnerable, you admit that there are things you don't understand that you could be wrong, things like that i I feel like it it helps uh, it it makes you a a more respectable figure to to be supportive and that's why the response to my episode with him has been so good and like you know there are people i see following me you know there are some that look like i'll be friends with and there are some that are just like mega america first you know whatever and i just go all right i will see how long this lasts but fucking okay let's do it you know, I, I'll say like, because I, I had lots of people that were kind of like that over the various things I've done where, um, you know, like I, I this program originally started out as a daily right. program on right, the right, right. and uh, which which is a conservative network. Shout out Ricky. I and think that's how what we became I found is, friends. Right, we both, yeah, yep. exactly. We both know Ricky. Um, and uh, one of the things I found is that I now have this really cool cohort of people. I literally got an email yesterday from a guy that was like, I don't agree with you, but I rarely fully disagree with you. <laughs> so I have this That's great. I have a cohort of people that like, they're not, yeah, no, it's wonderful. And it's also, I have to say, this is why I think that I am probably in a much safer position in terms of cancellation, because my audience already doesn't agree with me on a bunch of stuff. They're not coming right. to me to have their opinion reaffirmed right. to them. They're coming to me for a different reason, and they've I, I've built up a certain level of cachet with them. So, they like if I if I take a position that's contrary to them, I, that's they're not going to flip out, right? And I, I like those people. I think it's no, really and cool I forget who said this. I mean, shit, maybe even Tim said this to me off air, where he's like, "Dude, you've already been canceled. What are you afraid of?" And I go, "Yeah, I've been so yeah. scared." to talk like this or talk like a comic, which means like offensive language or, you know, even make fun of what happened to me. I was like, I always have to be very earnest and very, and ever since I've been doing it this month, it has just been the most freeing, cathartic. Cause look, I, you know, when people used to interview me, when people used to interview me, when people used to interview me about not my life falling apart and we're like, Hey, were you the class clown? It's like, no, the class clown beat the shit out of me and called me gay. Like I was, I use comedy to deal with trauma. I use comedy when things were falling apart in my life, when my. Oh, and then, and then you cut yourself off to that, that compensation mechanism. That's exactly what your I did. That's exactly what I did. Had. So the one thing you would normally use to get you through a hard time. Not only that, but I turned wow. on it because I was like, fuck comedy. Comedy is the reason that. It got me here, even though, by the way, when I said that none of my progressive friends checked up on me, um, Rogan, Doug Stanhope, Luis Gomez from Legion of Skanks, some of the biggest offensive comics in the world, they were the ones that are like, hey, I hope you're okay. People who I haven't talked to in forever, yeah. people who thought that I turned my back on comedy, they were the ones willing to be like, even though they were mad at me, hey, I hope you're okay. So. I'll never forget that. And I still ran away. And I still, I literally stopped watching comedy specials. I was like, fuck laughter. I was just done. I was, I'm a jujitsu guy now. That's what I do. And Mm -hmm. coming back into it and the amount of people who have come up to me and they're like, I'm so glad you're back. And I go, really? They're like, of course, dude. Like, of course I am. Because comics when we're on stage are constantly admitting to being flawed. And progressives are not admitting to being flawed. They're acting holy than thou. Can I, can I, can I, can I than thou. yeah, can I pause you for a second? Because like, uh, again, me being the label resistant guy, I'm an independent. I'm not in either party. If you were to look at my voting record, you'd see that I vote for libertarians, Republicans, and Democrats. It's like my iTunes shuffle. I'm, yeah. I'm not lockstep, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I do the iTunes travel thing. So I'm an independent. I'm just throwing that out there. That said, I do feel like um, I'm a little bit less worried about getting in trouble with my conservative friends than oh, I boy. with progressive friends. And I don't know if this is something endemic to progressives or what, but like I find that it's much more common for me to go on conservative shows as the odd man out that they're bringing on to hear a contrary position. I don't get that treatment as much. Well, with progressive, progressive shows, shows, you just go, oh, I'm, that- I'm about to get in fucking trouble. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would, I would go on. I would love to do more. Like, I'm very happy to go on. Like, you know, I, I'm not going to go on the Daily Stormer, right. uh, but, but even then, I might if I got to argue with him, right? But like, I'm very happy to go on and like, like try and promulgate good ideas. I don't really care where I'm promulgating what I consider good ideas. But I, I do find that like, um, the, the conservatives that I talk to seem to be more okay with I disagree Isn't with that you and wild? I like you. Whereas the because Sam, yeah. I mean, same the, with the, me. The, the, a lot of the progressives I know have kind of a not all, and I have lots of friends, so I'm not. I'm, I'm trying not to paint with a broad brush, but there, there's a higher tendency I find of well, I can't. I, I if I can figure out how we're both saying the same thing, we can still be friends. But if I if it turns out we actually do disagree with this, I've I don't had know if very we'll be friends anymore. And like, I've that, had very famous me. progressive comics say they want me on their podcast, but they can't have me because they'll get me in trouble. Because the- I'll be in trouble. And I go, you know, I had an affair, right? And they go, yeah. And I go, do you think I'm a creep from when we've hung out? And they go, no. And I go, all right. If if that's how you want to be, that's cool. And I will say your name when I get very famous. And I'm very excited for that. Well, and actually, one of, one of the other things that I'll, I'll add, now this is not you. This is not something you've done. But I think one of the uh, weird incentive structures that we have present for comedians right now is if you get canceled, the all the incentives are for hard, you to go hard, hard. alt right. Because your options are either shoot yep. yourself, and I'm not being facetious there. You were apparently yeah, considering 100%. this, or if I had a gun, I would have like, been dead. By well, the way. I can all- just straight up because all the other yeah. ways do not seem fun. Yeah, this is actually why I don't. I don't. I don't think they should have firearms. No. And I don't have one either because I I get bouts of melancholy as well, no. and I just don't and the want that and the other the, the other ways that I've it. googled, there are just too many ways to screw that up, and I already feel like a fuck up that I'm like I'm gonna fall right through that noose. <laughs> I'm going to break both <laughs> legs. I'm going to spend the next 10 years trying to wheel myself out of traffic. Like, it, awful, 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 awful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, like, but right now, though, if, like, if that happens, like, you can. Like, if you if you throw that card down and go, well, I'm going to be the, the anti-everything guy, like, those things are there. And I'm like, is this... I think a lot of the time when people get thrown underneath the bus with cancel culture, nobody thinks about what well, happens next. Uh, and it's just like, I, I just want to, I just hate that and guy I've and said what this bad on show. happen to him. It's like, well, he's either going to kill himself or he's going to make it I know. Well, I mean, worse. the way some people have come at me, I'm just kind of like, oh, you are actually, if you actually just read what they said, it's like, this should be evidence for they are trying to push me to kill. Like, that's the only thing that, that's the only option, right? Is that I kill myself. Mm. And... You know, I've made this joke before, but I will always say it. If I wrote a book called, you know, From Feminist to Freedom Fighter, and it was me wrapped in a flag and uh, holding a giant red pill, I would be a bazillionaire. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I, I I I messaged Shane Gillis, who was canceled from SNL, because they took some podcast shit out of context when he was, you know, making racy jokes. And I not racist jokes. Um and which that's the last thing you want to do as a comedian is make subversive wow. humor. Wow. I mean, can you imagine if we all went around saying things that were, were no, nope, this is all called yeah. Donald Trump fat. And I, he's like, oh yeah, the freedom of speech people came for me too. He's like, just be funny, dude. He's like, be undeniably funny. And Shane went from being not known to canceled and terrified to like go on the subway to now probably the most respected comedian working i mean his stand-up special and sketches that he put up on youtube are some of the best things you'll ever see and he can make fun of the left but man he goes after the right just as fucking hard he's just trying to be funny Mm -hmm. and funny wins and that's what i forgot when i was running away from comedy where it's just like hey we're all fuck-ups man and we're all talking about it and trying to make each other laugh and ever since i've been doing these like really offensive shows live shows and podcasts the audience is fucking diverse. They're laughing at all the racy shit. They're fucking, and I'm, I feel like I'm 22 again. It's the most like lit up I've been about art because I didn't realize how much I've been censoring myself. And yeah, well, and you, you, you are in a good place in that capacity. And that like, I think you've, you've, um, come out of this as a, a I, it appears to me to be a better person. I did not know a hundred percent about it. I, I can vouch for that based on you talking 
you're a better person, but also like, what do you have to be afraid of at this point? I yeah. think Tim was right. Like, you've already right. been canceled. Like, who's they can't double cancel. I mean, they'll you. try. The people that you're now developing as your own audience. Yeah. Um, and I like, I like again. I've I've not had to deal with any of the stuff you're dealing with. But like one of the reasons I felt uh, kind of empowered to do the Roe v. Wade thing last week, which I don't think will don't get think me in will. trouble, but I was a little bit worried about. I was like, I got this. You've seen the camper I've yeah. got in my side yard. I was like, I've got a camper. I've got a dog. Like, what's going to happen? Is like my right. wife going to leave me, or my kids going to be taken away? I don't have a wife. You're like, kids, I've assholes. already canceled myself like the worst with thing, my life decisions. Yeah, the worst. The worst thing you could do is I just downsize and Wallace and I live in the camper. We go live in Brian's Hell yeah, yard dude. again. Like, that's like, dope. So there so are literally like, okay. minimalism yeah, yeah, documentaries yeah. on that on Netflix. People jerk <laughs> off to that shit. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> No, that's a good point. You're right. There are people that, that they are aspiring to. Oh, I just want to quit my law firm and get a tiny point. house. It's all those motherfuckers. All they do is watch yeah. these Netflix specials yeah, and then they yeah. ignore their kids. It's fine. Yeah. Well, so we're, we're going to wrap up. But on that note, you, you've got a podcast. You've got shows. Okay. Where can people so find you? Uh, the podcast is called A Fuck Up's Guide to the Universe. Um, I just did a breakup episode with porn star Nicole Aniston, but then had John Cleese from Monty Python on. Uh, Andrew's going to come on. Which is, I was extremely it's a good jealous episode. to hear that you had it's a, John it, it's a solid That's episode really cool. that guy is like literally said to me he's like oh i get canceled all the time people tell me i'm trending on twitter i don't know why i don't look and i go that's that's the dream. You know, you know, John, John Cleese was was offered a lordship. They offered to make him a member of Hell the House yeah, of Lords, and he turned it down because he was afraid he'd have to stay in England during winter. Like he's he turned down a lordship. He's the fuck. He's, 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 he's one God, of my fucking favorite people in the world. So that's the podcast. Yeah. Um, if it's hard to look up for some reason, just go to jamiekillsteinpodcast dot com. My Instagram, which is currently shadow banned, you can. Uh, it's the Jamie Kilstein. Uh, find it, follow it, share the content, so I'm not shadow banned anymore. The Jamie Kilstein, and then my Twitter, which is probably where most of uh, you guys are, is just at Jamie Kilstein. And if uh, like we've we've got folks here in Austin that oh. are listening, um, if they want to come uh, see the yeah, live I'm doing show, a crowd work go? show um, with a couple of my friends on. June 2nd, I think it's going to be a regular thing I do in Austin, so I'd love to have you on the show where it's just all improvised, sure, all crowd work, but it's not like the New York kind of like, hey, hey, look at that shirt, you're gay, hey, what do you do for a living, gay, like it's just, we actually try to talk, like the last time we talked about like deep trauma shit with the audience, and it was fucking hysterical and a blast, and I, I bring some of the best comics in Austin. Well, I, I also, I'll say like on top of that, I don't like being mean to the audience, I like doing like this kind of underhanded Fred yes. Willard maneuver. So like, um, like you, cause you've done the oh, yeah. Fringe Festival, right? Okay. Did you ever go on a, sh- a show called Hate in Live over there? It's been, it's been around a while now, but the, the, the premise is, is it a playoff, the late um, live the aud- late show. Okay. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. It's, it's a, it's a playoff of that. And the, the, the premise is that they will, um, uh, they'll, they'll, the comedians draw something out of a hat right. and they have to hate it. It's, it's, it's semi improvisational, right? But there's a moment in the show where, um, the an audience member volunteers Ugh. to be roasted, and they yeah. come up and they roast them. And I, if this, but by the time I'm doing this, I've already, I've already had pot shots, well-meaning, harmless pot shots for comedic effect, taken at me from a Canadian comic, uh, a, a, a kind of heavy set Canadian female comic, and from a, uh, a a Spanish comic, and all this, and like, and I get up and go, hey man, to the the audience member that they're tearing apart. I was like, don't let these guys bother you. That's basically like. Girl yeah. Louie Anderson and if Antonio Banderas had Down syndrome, don't let it like and I just start like yeah. kind of tearing into them, but through this like That's faux yeah, nice guy thing. So anyway, point is like I'm not you know, I- yeah, I won't make no, fun no. of the audience. Yeah. Also, I might bleep that. Uh, hilarious. The show. We'll I, I have to. This is getting me to listen to the podcast to be like, where is he a fucking coward? Um, again, already been canceled, <laughs> baby. So yeah, um, I'm really excited because uh, you were telling me about your audience and they sound fucking great. So I, I hope they, I hope, I hope they, they like are, this. They are like, like this is like I've been. Uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that I actually yeah. like my. Oh, audience I should actually and, plug my uh, Patreon because. Uh, you actually have well-meaning people and not just degenerates with no money like m- my audience. Uh, if you do like this and you like my content. <laughs> yeah. One of the other benefits is you find that the free enterprise people tend yeah. to have more money too. So Patreon.com yeah. slash Jamie Kilstein. Uh, bow down to the free market. Blah, blah, blah. Patreon.com slash. Wait, hold on. Your, your June 2nd show. Uh, oh, Where's The Creek in the Cave in Austin, Texas at 9 o'clock. Yeah, Creek, Creek in the, the Cave. cave. Okay. Thank cool. you. Hell yeah, Great. dude. All right. This is a blast. Jamie Kilstein, thank you so much. That's the show. Thanks for listening. Thank you, media assistant Eric Stipe, who edited today's program. And on that note, thank you, glorious patrons of the orphanage. 
who make the whole thing possible. And you can join them and support the show by going to patreon.com slash Andrew Heaton. Until next time, I've been Andrew Heaton, and so have you. <laughs>